This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So Succession is officially over, and while most viewers were pretty satisfied by the ending, myself included, there's also been plenty of criticism, with some viewers feeling like they just wasted four seasons worth of character investment, only for, spoiler alert, none of the children to take over their father's company. But beyond their fractured relationships, you could argue that the only thing they actually lost was pride. They still sold the business at the highest price, like their father intended. Roman is now free from the burden of expectation. Shiv didn't get what she wanted in totality, but did get to choose her own fate. And Connor Roy can still be interested in politics, until a very old age. It's really just Kendall that truly lost, having sacrificed everything to get here, only to trip and fall at the finish line, like he always does. Except this time he'll never get another chance to get it right. Writer Jesse Armstrong wanted the show to be circular, to demonstrate that people don't change, that they're doomed to repeat their patterns of trauma again and again, which made for a powerful finale, but also made the preceding episodes to get there somewhat muddled at times. We would see characters make important decisions, both internally and externally, in ways that would traditionally cue them to then transform into a more consistent, darker, capable version of themselves but instead we would then watch them start to fumble and doubt themselves all over again. At different points throughout the season, so much was changing that it felt as if various characters could have risen up and clinched it. So with that in mind, I've written eight alternative endings, not just for the final episode, but as broad narrative directions this season could have gone. Now if you're fully satisfied with the ending as it is, then all of these will feel wrong, but if you're dissatisfied or unsure of the ending, then these possibilities will either resonate with you, or help you to see that maybe the ending the writers went with made the most sense. Either way, it's just a bit of fun to fully close the book on the succession experience. So here we go. Number 1. The Kids Slay the Dragon After the first episode, when the siblings beat Logan in a bidding war to buy Pierce, we're set up for a classic battle of Logan versus his children the ultimate test for them to prove their competence by running a rival news station. The Gojo deal goes through, but with ATN carved out for Logan, so with Tom and Greg by his side, he's now running hyperpartisan entertainment news in the run-up to the election. Whereas the kids are trying to run a network based exclusively on balance, ethics, and facts. But this causes them to discover the ugly truth, that despite what they claim, viewers prefer the partisan sludge to straight up news. So they adapt their coverage and start pulling in competitive numbers. This causes Logan to get ugly, leaking stories about his kids one by one, Shiv's infidelity, Kendall's drug use, and Roman's sexual harassment of Jerry. So much so that they have to hit back even harder, exposing their father's corrupt ties and all of the emotional abuse he's inflicted on everyone in his orbit. This makes both sides hate each other more than ever, and the need to win is so intense that on election night, Logan obtusely calls it for Mencken early, whereas the kids follow Shiv's advice and wait for the real numbers, and are proven right for doing so. Logan's destructive decision puts ATN at major risk, and he gets ousted from his own company in a vote of no confidence, has a heart attack, and dies. This ending would send a mixed message. On the one hand, the kids would slay the dragon that's been tormenting them their whole life, and prove they were more capable than he ever made them feel. But they would ultimately be left realising that family matters more than business, that they may technically have what they always wanted, but without their father there to pat them on the back and validate them, the win is ultimately hollow, and they'd give anything for more time with him. Number 2. They all end up broke. Throughout the series, we've seen many references to the family's worth being tied to stock, and the inherent risk that involves. You know, Kodak was trading at about $100 a share back in 97. Yesterday, you could pick it up for about 3 bucks. So rather than selling at the perfect time, Logan can't come to a final deal with Madsen. He tries to play dirty by leaking stories about Lucas sending his blood to Ebba, 
This causes Matson to hit back, and he exposes that Logan helped to cover up what happened with the waiter. This implodes the credibility of the company, and the family are now under legal investigation. Jerry tries to push Logan out, so she can take over and appease the shareholders. But when Logan fires her, she goes nuclear, exposing all of Roman's sexual harassment that went on for years. With the public now seeing how toxic the family is, inside and out, the company plummets in value and becomes irrelevant, as Gojo just buys Pierce instead, and Waystar becomes the Kodak of this generation, leaving the family with nothing but each other and a few million dollars. Poorest rich person in America, the world's tallest dwarf. The children have to find a new line of work, but when they interview for jobs, they quickly discover they're unqualified and have to suck up and be polite to earn even a modest role in a middling company like everyone else. This would show the volatility of wealth, that just because the children were born into extraordinary circumstances does not mean they're guaranteed to stay there, as most rich families lose their wealth just a couple of generations later. Number 3. Dark Horse Greg Rather than Greg remaining the comic relief, in season 4 we start to see a different side to him. It starts in episode 2, when Tom tells Greg to shut down Kerry's dreams of being a news anchor on Logan's behalf. He initially seems nervous, but once she starts to disrespect him, something flips inside him and he gives it to her straight. He's cold, calloused and uncaring. We start to see more of how he really behaves when he's out dating, and his ambitions become clear. Yet whenever he's around the siblings, he switches back to his usual goofball role, so they don't notice him worming his way in with the real elites, Matson and Menken. Fearing his job is on the line, as he doesn't think Shiv and her brothers are competent enough to win, Tom forces Greg to secretly strategize ways to defeat them. Most of the ideas belong to Greg, yet Tom insists that he needs to take the credit and promises he'll bring Greg with him once he wins. But because he can't be seen to betray Shiv in case the plan backfires, he sends Greg to deliver the message as his loyal servant. But when he gets there, we see Greg sit down with Madsen and nothing more. When he returns, he tells Tom that Lucas loved the ideas. He loved them so much that he's giving Greg the top job. As it turns out, he threw Tom under the bus and took all the credit for himself. Tom is crushed as Greg smugly tells him that he's out. And when the Roys confront him, Greg calls Roman a sprinkle and Kendall a parasite, showing he never forgot how they treated him on his way to the top. This would be a completely different direction, but done right could be in line with the philosophy of the show. It would make Greg the secret protagonist of the series, learning how to backstab and manipulate from his cousins while getting progressively more polished and professional each season. Because as a relative outsider, Greg knows what the real world is like, and therefore values the opportunity in front of him more than Logan's kids. Number 4. Broken Family Business Continuing from the end of episode 4, when Kendall internally decides to become more like his dad to win, we see a darkness capture him, like Michael Corleone in The Godfather. Once his father isn't there to fight him, suddenly all the lessons he imprinted on him can be put into action, and he becomes a Logan 2.0. When Carl tries to disrespect him, he gets threatened and put in his place. When Rava tries to take the kids away, Kendall successfully stops her and forces her to be by his side at the funeral for the cameras. Roman helps Kendall to stop the Gojo deal, but there can only be one CEO moving forward, so now both brothers must compete against one another. Roman tries to use the waiter's death against Kendall, but he has no evidence, only hearsay. Whereas Kendall uses all the photos Roman sent to Jerry to justify firing him as that's consistent with the public image he built in Season 3. He then strategically offers Shiv the COO position instead, both to get her on side and for better optics. We fast forward 20 years later, and Kendall remains the King of Waystar. At Thanksgiving, we see that he and Roman still have a fractured relationship, just like Logan had with Ewan until the day he died. 
In the final scene, we see Kendall putting his son Iverson through the same patterns of emotional abuse that Logan inflicted upon him, so that one day he too may take over the family business. This is what most people rooting for Kendall were probably expecting, sending the message that cycles of abuse are handed down from one generation to the next. That Logan's legacy lives on not just in business, but at home. And although you could technically say this means Kendall wins, it comes at the cost of his soul, as the good man we once rooted for no longer exists. Commenting that there's no way of amassing this much power without losing your humanity in the process. Number 5. Roman the Destroyer At the end of episode 2, we see Roman being converted to the dark side to work with his father. Kendall and Shiv both politically belong at Pierce, but Roman was always more ATN minded. After the Gojo sale goes through, Logan now lets Roman shadow him at ATN as they go to war with Kendall and Shiv at Pierce through a divisive election year. Knowing Logan wants his blood to take over, Tom is intimidated by Roman's presence and starts to secretly work for Shiv to take Roman down from the inside, as their relationship rekindles behind the scenes following the news of her pregnancy. Greg doesn't know if he should go with Tom or Roman, but after seeing that Kendall and Shiv are ultimately failing at running Pierce, he sticks with Team Logan and exposes Tom's underhanded ways to Roman, who fires him. With Mencken in office, and seeing Roman bulldoze his way through Tom, Logan feels he's found his successor, and hands the keys to Roman, whose first order of business is to buy Pierce too. So although his siblings can still run that network, he's ultimately the king of both. After years of being bullied, the tables have finally turned. With a fascist as president, and Roman running both news networks as pure partisan entertainment, the world feels much darker. And we close with Jerry acting as his second in command, bringing him attractive aspiring news anchors to take advantage of in his own sick way. This is the real legacy of abuse. This would be a more sinister ending to the series, reflecting the bitter realities of the current media landscape where bad actors with no moral compass are rewarded for doing whatever it takes to maintain their audience's attention, regardless of the consequences. It would highlight that it takes a sick person to run these organisations at maximum profit, and even though their downfall may be inevitable, the upper class benefit from having someone amoral run things this way. Number 6. A Different Death Instead of Logan dying early, during the family's conflict, Kendall falls back into drugs and dies of an overdose. This puts things in perspective, as Kendall was always the one who wanted the top job the most, and emotionally needing it for him to ever feel complete landed him in an early grave. But unlike his devastated siblings, Logan handles his son's death surprisingly well, and in his speech at the funeral, he takes no responsibility for what happened stating that Ken always had his own problems. This makes the children realise that Logan doesn't value them the way they thought he did. Having learned from their brother's many mistakes over the years, Roman and Shiv team up to defeat their father, finding a way to stop the Gojo deal and kicking an increasingly unwell Logan out of his own company in a vote of no confidence, this time succeeding where Kendall previously failed. Roman and Shiv become co-CEOs together, balancing each other out, and Logan ends up passing away with Connor by his side, the only sibling who never tried to compete with him. At his funeral, Shiv delivers a detached speech, using the same quote he used to wash his hands of Kendall about her father. When we fast forward years later, with the two most competitive characters gone, the family are now more united and healthy, having finally found peace. This ending would completely change the context of the first three seasons. They would now be viewed as the gradual unravelling of Kendall Roy, who was consistently spiralling into self-destructive behaviour. Logan is too old to change, having already dealt with the responsibility of his sister's death. As Ewan had stated, at some point he closed his heart and stopped trying to be good. But by removing the most obvious successor, 
it will leave a hole in the siblings' hearts, and cause them to reflect on what the point of playing this game even is. Number 7. Shiv's New Man With her father dead and her husband gone, Shiv gets the news that she also lost her baby. This leaves her with nothing but her business ambitions and a fresh start. She's eager to get involved in the company in any way she can, but her brothers then push her out of the CEO position, as she has no experience, and intend to stop the deal to keep Waystar for themselves. But because she's still grieving the loss of Logan, she starts to find familiar qualities in Lucas Madsen, as he's just as cutting and ambitious. Logan clearly saw something in him that he never saw in his own children, hence he was willing to sell. You're marrying a man fathoms beneath you because you don't want to risk being betrayed. So now that Tom is old news, Shiv romantically pursues the type of man Logan wanted her to be with. She's not used to dating men with more power than her, and she finds it oddly comforting, especially when Madsen tells her that they could lead this empire together. She gives him all the dirt, Roman's sexual harassment, Kendall's waiter problem, and he uses it to crush their reputation and ensure the deal goes through. But once it's over the finish line, she goes to her dad's office to celebrate with her new man, and finds Greg there, waiting for her. In the same way Greg has just been blindly following orders and firing people, he's there to tell her that Lucas thanks her for her time, but that he's not looking for anything serious right now. Shiv then exits the building, completely broken just like Kendall was, but this time having lost everything to the man her father saw as the next version of himself. The exact fear she had always avoided by dating men she could control. This ending would go down a treat for viewers that hate Shiv, as not only would she be fully to blame, but she would end up with nothing emotionally, no relationship, no father, no siblings. And it would still maintain a similar message to the original, that the kids weren't destined to take over their father's legacy, as they could never put their differences aside. And finally, number 8, Happy Families. After Logan tells the kids they're not serious people, he skips Connor's wedding to fly to Sweden, and survives. But when he gets there, he realises Matson isn't who he thought he was, and his liberal plans with ATN make him sick. But he offers Logan such a good price, just like he did with Kendall and Roman, that due to his fiduciary responsibilities, he has to accept it. But now he's the one that wants to blow it up from the inside. He can't say it to Carl or Jerry or Frank, as they're older and just want to sell so they can retire. So Logan has to enlist the help of his children from the outside, to each use their unique skills to help undermine and expose Madsen so that the deal sours. Shiv gets back together with Tom after discovering she's pregnant. Each sibling performs their duties admirably, and after discovering that Lucas's numbers are grossly exaggerated, the family are united in stopping big tech from taking over. Logan now trusts his children in a way he never has before, as without them, he would have sold his cherished business to the wrong man. So he entrusts the company to them, awarding Kendall and Roman the top job, and then buying Pierce so that Shiv can be CEO in an environment more consistent with her values. With Tom tagging along as her COO, and Greg as his loyal assistant. This would be the happiest ending possible that some fans wanted to see, a way back for the family after years of conflict and trauma. No one dies, everyone wins, and the future actually looks brighter than ever. The problem is that this ending would suggest that some families are just made to rule, and that nepotism isn't just effective, but can actually be ideal for everyone, which would be a pretty hard pill to swallow. So those are just some alternative endings for you to chew on. Maybe you think the original reigns supreme, maybe you like some of these ideas better, or can tweak them to your own personal preferences. But let me know in the comments section, what did you think of Succession's finale? And if you had it your way, how would the show have ended? This video is sponsored by Squarespace. 
Everything is online these days, and there's no better way to deliver a strong first impression than an elegant, professional-looking website. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform you can use to build your brand and grow your business. So whether it's showing off your creative work or selling a product or a service, Squarespace makes this process so much smoother. For example, let's say you're a creative person, but you don't know how to build your own website using code. Then Squarespace offers you their own ready-made templates that you can adapt to seamlessly fit your brand. Or if you're looking for a new way to monetize your content, you can create a members-only section of your website, where customers pay to gain access to certain content as a once-off or subscription service. And if you wanted to expand into blogging, Squarespace helps you to categorize, share, and schedule your posts so your followers can stay up to date with everything you're producing. So go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And then once you're ready to launch your page, use my promo code OBSERVATION to get 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Well, if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you for watching. But if you could now give the video a like, possibly even leave a comment and click on that subscribe button, it will encourage that mysterious algorithm to do its thing. And if you want to support the channel personally, you can check out my Patreon.